you want to go ahead and just want to, whatever you guys want to do. I'm just going to inquire why season four never really happened. We had the steam going up in this season. It was, uh, basically, uh, you know, as far as the, the, the art side of things, I know I know a lot about what we did in the production of the show, but when it comes to that kind of stuff is um, it's kind of higher up on the food chain, that, and I don't really have all the answers. I know there was a negotiation between Hasbro and Cartoon Network, and personally, what I think happened was was they, they it just was getting the negotiations were going taking too long. And Hasbro had known that, you know, in between seasons two and three, there was a year gap, and they didn't want that again. They wanted, you know, they wanted stuff on the air while the toys were on the shelves. So I think it got to a point where they realized it was going to be another year before they had the season on the air, and they decided to to stop and just start developing whatever was coming coming next, which they were already thinking about anyway. Season four would have been the last. So Leah forms, uh, grown-ups forms for him the Almanac. We know a bit about what was intended for Cyclones in terms of his backstory. In your mind, what was the chain of events that uh, led up to that led up to that ultimate future and Cyclones going back to the time? We were never going to do that that part I'm, of the story. I, mean, I, mean, I know you probably weren't on the actual show. I'm curious what your own Would you like me to answer your question? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, we were, we were going to do... Um, a flash forward episode where you just get thrown in into the future and, and, and they, it's uh, it they were going to talk about it being post Unicron Wars and uh, Galvatron was was ruler of Cybertron and so it led into that and then we were just kind of kind of go around the whole Unicron thing you, uh, his head probably would have been floating around Cybertron but we didn't want to repeat the movie or try to outdo the movie. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. So, I just wanted to say if people do want to use the mic, um, that way uh, this will probably end up on the YouTube page, and then we'll be able to hear everybody's questions. Also, there's people on. So, obviously, when designing Transformers characters, you'll back on previous series and try to analyze there. But when you design incidents of human characters and um, background for them. Do you design them after people you know? Characters from other shows have that on the go for you? Both of those things uh, happen. We, we, do, um, we, we end up drawing each other like on the, on the crew into the show. I know um, Marty's in there and Mourinho Maramba, who's the other designer, is in there. Uh, other than that, we find like it could be like a guy walking down the street and we're like, ah, look at that guy. He's a total incidental. And then we'll just. <laughs> You know, we'll end up putting in the show, or it could be, you know, just, just, you know, it can even be, um, you know, some clothing reference we like, and 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 the way the clothes look, you kind of know what what kind of person was going to wear those clothes in, in your mind. So it can be anything like that. Or yeah, there's there's definitely, um, you know, um, ideas from other shows and stuff too. So. Um, and another quick one: when you end up doing um, background Transformers characters, and you have general idea that they're not getting a toy, or you haven't planned out the work yet. Do you bother thinking, oh, how am I going to these arms into a transformation scheme? Or you just go, oh, I want to get as close as possible to what he used to look like? Yeah, we did. I would say 95 to 99 percent of the, the characters, we, you know, I would talk with Eric Siebenauer, and we would figure out a functional transformation for those characters, just in case, you know, because you know, you never know when, you know, if. If they need a doom buggy, and you know, in, in the, on the shelves, then then there's a huge yeah, number already already done. Yeah, so we we tried to do that for almost every character. Okay, thanks a lot. All right, two what other things. Uh, I remember seeing a sketch of like Bludgeon. Was he going to be in the show at some point? Or uh, ideas? It was. That was probably just more for fun. I, we had never talked about Bludgeon. All right, and I always thought it was cool when uh, that uh, Omega Supreme clone fell on. Uh, was defeated on Dinobot Island, couldn't get back up, he was purple. I was sitting there going like, is he going to be tripped to Dinosaur is purple, <laughs> big. Was he going to be there? No, well, we didn't have any, we didn't have any, um, any plans for it. 
that's it. Mm -hmm. Hi. Um, some people think that the designs for animated came uh, was a drastic new redesign, but having watched uh, Beast Wars and Beast Machines and looking at the cancelled line trans tech, I have a suspicion that these designs kind of grew out of the momentum that G1 was already going under. Can you comment on that? I think that's a, a true to a certain extent because I know um, a lot of the theories I worked out for, you know, the, the, the noses going into the helmet kind of came from my ideas of what what the Beast Wars characters look like, and um, so there was there was a lot of of uh, visual continuity. A little, yeah, like that. But and, and then I was I was also trying to mix in what what I was doing on Teen Titans, and I wanted to have some of the Mighty Orbots feel in that too. So I, I kind of took all that stuff and mushed it together into one. One thing where I was that I was happy with, so it was it was a it was a big process like that of, of figuring taking the pieces that I liked from all these different things and putting them together. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just another one. This is related to the uh, comment you made earlier about how you develop transformations for all the characters. So, how would you see the workload on designing characters? How do they compare to other shows that you've worked on in terms of if you have to design a of transformations and do back and forth and stuff? Well. The process got easier and easier as we went along. The first two seasons, though, I was the only designer. Um, I think Arino did some here and there, and we had some freelancers, but I was the only main designer for the first two seasons. And I was the color stylist, so I had to, I had to, to basically draw every character and, and color it myself. But there was a lot of you know working with Eric to get the transformations right. And Eric had ideas and input on, on certain designs that, you know, Especially once they were closer to his heart, so it was a it was a pretty heavy workload. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. And animated tra toxic trauma. Can it? Can it or not? Well, I have this. It's totally, totally real. Animated toxic trauma. <laughs> okay. Uh, another question. Any chance of like the uh, Maximals appearing in season four at all? Uh, we had. I when I did a signing for the Allspark Almanac, Marty Eisenberg reminded me that we had a show we wanted to do where the title was Truck vs. Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> so, there you go. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that there was going to be a fourth season. Did you add any aspects to a potential following to that one? I think we were going to do, uh, we wanted to try to incorporate more uh, Michael Bay Alonjo's like, I, I, we wanted to maybe try a barricade and uh, uh, talk about Bumblebee getting a second strike. Uh, I don't think, I know there's that, that um, concept that I mean, the Alice Park element in, but I don't, personally I wouldn't have wanted to go full on flames with Optimus or change Ratchet to highlighter color or anything. <laughs> so, that would be horrible. Yeah, that wasn't my choice though. So. After Transformers Prime, is there any chance that we might be getting a revival of Transformers Animated? I think that depends on what Hasbro wants to do. You know, it's their, it, it, literally, it, these are their toys and, and, and I'm just playing with them. So, so whatever, whatever they, they would like, if they, if they decide they want to revisit that, then, you know, I definitely would be interested. Would Rodimus' team have played a bigger role in season four? Well, yeah, we had we had plans for Rodimus. Um, I think we were going to upgrade him to Elite Guard, and because the his mission there with that team was part of his uh, Elite Guard training to, to become to work in that command structure. So, so there definitely would have been more of him and, and probably his team too. So, were the last couple of toys released an indication that the kind of yeah, in a way, uh, it, they wanted a bigger Ironhide presence too. So. Well, um, what was the original? Like at the end of the series, there was some indication that Star, uh, Star, like, where did she actually come from? Like, oh, you think I'm gonna answer that right here? Right now? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
anyone actually know that? Like, yes. Yes, we do know. <laughs> we the, the the whole sorry. Um, everything about sorry, we we know. We know her past, and we know her, her future. Yeah, because that ending is kind of questionable. Like like she said that she probably came from the programs that they found, but they were blanks, and she had a spark. Like, well, board platforms can be stored with sparks too. So. No, but the ones that the Decepticons had were blanks. Mm -hmm. There were sparks. And, the sh and that ship didn't come around until like the beginning of the series, like long before Sorry yes. with you, Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> These are the questions we must know. <laughs> Was there any characters that you wanted to have that either Hasbro next or just you know wouldn't make the cut? Oh, there were there were always you know everybody on the show has a huge wish wish list of characters and I don't remember Hasbro ever saying no we can't do that character. It was more like we, you know it was the time because we never wanted it to become a show that wasn't about our core team and we wanted those those characters to have the strongest presence and introduce new characters. Um, so it was only a matter, a, a question of time, and you know, Decepticons. You saw less Decepticons, so it was harder to to get them in uh, into the shows, unless you were out in space. So, hey, who came up with Safe Spray? And we play the whole game. <laughs> I think that was uh, that was a Rio Morando's design. I think that was. Um, I don't remember if he came up with that on his own or we. I talked about it, but it was that was his design. So what was it going to be his all about? He uh, we talked about that image. Well, we talked we talked about in the in the uh, TF Club tech specs that he's uh, he is a hovercraft and he he's he patrols the um, the the liquid tube systems that are underneath Cybertron, like the coolant the coolant pools and things. And uh, in the all part, the all Man Act two, there was the pickup. Yeah. How was he gonna fit in? The the um the gray and black one. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that was just a toy repaint, as far as I uh, as far as we knew. I don't I don't know if there was any intention of, of having that on the show. Mm -hmm. Hello. Inquiring fan girls want to know: Have there been more fans of in season four? <laughs> oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Not as much as you would like, or you're you're. Uh, Inferring <laughs> you, the, the fan zone in, in the bathroom is, is far enough for me. <laughs> what, what, can you tell us what it was like working with Hasbro itself to design the characters and not only that to make the toys? It was a really, really good collaborative um, uh, team effort. And, and everybody, um, you know, by, especially by Season two or season three, we are we had it really down where, you know, I would talk. I was talking to Eric, you know, at least a couple times a week, probably every day in some cases, um, through emails and calling, and we we got it we got it really down where, you know, the 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 designs and the toys were really being worked on at the same time. I think so, yeah, probably. We, we wanted to have Soundwave eventually join Megatron's team. And what about his uh, army of guitars? <laughs> <laughs> they would continue to grow his musical instruments, yeah. Would any of the other Autobots have uh, tried to use Soundwave's guitar? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Against Soundwave again? I don't know if we would do that again. But. In the Allspark Almanac, we saw the uh, kind of concept design of what the uh, series would be. Like they're like really detailed and really like movie like or trans tech. Uh, what kind of made the change like to that? I'm not sure which which part you're talking about. Well, like uh, it's Heroes. Oh, that was yeah. okay. So Heroes was Hasbro's concept before I came in and became oh, involved okay. with animated. So they were. They were developing this on their own before 
they came to Sam Register and, and, and Cartoon Network. So that's actually the, the precursor to what, what anime was. Alright, so it's just a different design. Yeah, it was different design. Then there was, you know, I think with every every time Hasbro goes into to making a new a new show, they go through probably hundreds, if not thousands, of different concepts of what it what it could be. And and what it eventually becomes is kind of takes little pieces of all those things. Uh, back to the question about Soundwave uh, and the cassettes. Were there any other designs for the other cassettes, like was Ravage a set of drums or something like that? No, we didn't. We didn't do any any designs for Ravage or from One Frenzy or Slugfest or Overkill or anybody. Um, it's all, it was always in the back of my mind, and we never really came up with. I guess we this, we, we would discuss it offhand, but we never had a serious discussion about what, okay. what they would their albums would be. Cool. Do you happen to know when we finally get season three on DVD? No, I'm not Hasbro. <laughs> Please do not ask me. All right, and someone needs to ask something. So what would uh, Sentinel's character arc have looked like in season four, okay. given that now he was Magnus and such? We talked a lot of, a lot of different things for Sentinel, and Sentinel was, he was gonna have a rough time. In season four, I don't want to go too much into it. <laughs> a lot of things, a lot of things are, are going to happen. Um, so, a couple quick things. Um, in the Almanac two, now this is spoiler to people, calm down. Um, there's a deleted scene from the last episode where it showed um, another one of our favorite All Spark bots, uh, Rekgar, having his All Spark Rekgar taken out. Uh, they first say, "You monsters, how could you even think of killing Rekgar?" <laughs> And what made you decide to have him would be one of them, and eventually well, cutting it? Uh, we were all, uh, uh, originally, we were going to see all those characters being pulled towards, I don't think Redgar would have lost his right now. Even if he did, <laughs> I believe that, that he has a spark, so he would be fine. And Starscream, the reason he died when he's, he lost his, is he's sparkless. He, he's, oh, he's, so, because he lost it, it didn't just give him a new one, it just... Uh, no, Starscream, it didn't... But all the ones that never had sparks in the first place. Yeah, the ones that were created on, on Earth okay. by the Ellsberg fragments did have sparks. Um, but, but, so, we, uh, it, it becomes moot, though, because we, um, they, they were being pulled towards it, but I don't think there's was going to be any guy anyway. Okay, so is this going to be... They weren't close enough to the... Video. Yeah. Um, second question, what did you have against Oilsless Nose? I mean, was it taking away attention from the chins? Eric, were you jealous? <laughs> I don't know. It didn't feel right to me because um, the the animated noses were so small. I mean, yeah, that I was the that was kind of my intention. That they would be anchored to the helmet and and almost not even nose. They, they you know they, they did grow over time. I think um, Eric wanted to push away from that, but um, and I also thought it took away from the kind of cool skull like. Thing that he had going on with, without the nose, you know. So, oh. yeah, no, no. sorry to anyone who's a fan of, of the big noses. <laughs> Get those in Scooby. <laughs> <laughs> we, went, we went the other way with that one. I thought that everyone talked about sound. But was Blaster ever considered? I don't. I don't know. Not um, not in any serious way that that we. It's you know it's totally possible we we could have done it because we we probably would have kept adding incidental cameos at least to Cybertron so it's possible but no serious talk. I I'm a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> no, that guy's in the show. <laughs> um, Street cameo. Over, over the course of the last uh, while, as you've been working on the show, you've been getting more and more interactive online with folks like through Twitter or even through forumspring.me where people can ask you about the slipstream. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, like, compared to other work you've done, I, I'm not sure if you've had this level of interaction with the viewership and, and the folks into it with other shows you've done, but compared to something where there might not have been as much back and forth between the folks who watch the show, how, how different an experience does it make it for you? I think that with Transformers, I, I have a level of interaction that doesn't lead to me being really pissed off as much as what I had with like Teen Titans or you know because I don't some, for some reason the, the when I when I would read the fan pages on that stuff I would be like what why are you trying to hook up Jinx and and you know Trident or something else it was 
But um, it's it's just a lot more fun to interact with you guys. I don't know. What's, I feel like maybe. Um, yes, you are. You're very cool. I don't know. <laughs> Eject them from the room, please. But I feel. I, I guess because um, you know I am a Transformers fan, and I feel it's easy to interact with with other Transformers fans. Cool, and uh, thank you very much for page 135 of the Almanac Volume 2 available now. And <laughs> if you buy three of them, you get free shipping. And I'd be sh I'm sure he'd be happy to, to sign that for anyone. I'm sure that, that Mr. Derek J. White would also be happy to sign your Almanac if you approach it at 1 p.m. today in the elevator. Oh, <laughs> sit down. <laughs> but elevators are scary, though. Know. Anybody else? Any more questions? Red X? Yeah, I'm not Red X. <laughs> he's, he's the part of Starscream that's, that's slipstream. <laughs> you monster. <laughs> when you're working on the designs and the creation and all of that, to like, let off steam, I feel like, okay, I have to get away from this in a second. I'm sure most artists I know end up drawing like, really random things. You're like, hey, what can I do with this character? So what was probably the most off the wall thing that you did just on your own time for fun or to, to de-stress from working on the creation process? I don't know. I know, um, <laughs> I know that the directors, some of the directors like Ben Jones would draw a little like silly comic strip kind of versions of the characters on the on this on their script as as they went through the script, but I, I don't really remember doing anything like that. Um I'm sure there must be you are you're, you're totally right, there must be some some drawing that and there was an A.F. somebody go out with cookies or, yeah. you know, yeah. I, 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 I did, um, started to do, just for fun one time, I started to do Professor Princess in a Cabbage Patch Mech suit, but <laughs> I didn't finish that up. That's what I do for fun. <laughs> Congratulations, season four is restarted. What's your dream character you're putting in and who's the voice after guest? Oh, I wanted to do uh, the stores, and I would like to have Corey Burton do his Count Dooku voice, so he's like sort of a Christopher Lee vampire. <laughs> That's my favorite character. Uh, I just want to say, Lug Knight is really hard to draw. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sorry. At, at one point during the production, the pre production, it was going to be Red Alert instead of Yeah. Friendship. Yeah, and, and before I came on, I don't know if you're familiar, but there's a comic book artist named Eric Kometi who's a friend of mine, works in the animation industry, and they came to him and he did some designs. And so my Red Alert, the female Red Alert, is based on his, some of his concept stuff that he did. But um, yeah, originally, uh, by the time I got, I was on board, Red Alert, it was still Red Alert, but it was, it was male, it was a male character. And um, it was also still Hot Shot, and not uh, Bumblebee. So I, I begged for Bumblebee, and then, I think there was the, the first meeting Cartoon Network and Hasbro had, I think Sam, Sam just got this look on his face, Sam Register, and just like, isn't Ratchet a cooler name than Red Alert? And everybody in the room went, huh? <laughs> so that's, that's what happened. Um, it's interesting because if it were Red Alert, you'd have exact, correct, Team of Five archetype from Gatchaman. I wonder if there was like an influence on that. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, not, maybe not, um, but uh, all those, those kind of Team of Five shows very, are very you know, thematically similar, even um, or about to some, some some extent like that. And so definitely, like when you think of those kind of teams, you want that to be your archetype. Right. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Were there any plans to do turning Rattletrap into an actual Maximum? Uh, we're going to bring him to Earth first and have him get an Earth mode, and we wanted to do like a, a Big Daddy Roth kind of. Um, Hot rod car with you know pipes and and, and then it, maybe I think it was leading down that path. Where do you become a bandit anymore? Or just a I think it was I think it was going down that path. And we, well, yeah, we wanted to put up like a rat uh, logo on the side of this car <laughs> with, the, with those old eyeballs. <laughs> and uh, what was the thing behind introducing Hydra as like not an unwanted guy? I thought that was kind of strange. I think um, I think I wanted to. I think I wanted to, to, to have more Headmaster characters. And I can't remember exactly how we got to that. I may have, I may have asked for somebody else. 
a friend of a friend's job, and I may not have the name rights anymore. Yeah, I mean, it, we definitely wanted them to be a, that kind of side. So. Cool. so in the show, we get to see Rodimus Prime, Cyclonus, Ultra Magnus. Were there ever any plans to bring Galvatron into it as his own character or as a Megatron reformat? Um, well, uh, I talked about a little bit. Um, we wanted to do a flash forward episode where, where Galvatron was. And I had this mental image in my head of Cybertron having like a, a third of it, of it is gone. And he's sitting on a throne in the center of Cybertron. And he, he rules Cybertron at that point in the future after the Unicron Wars. <coughs> <laughs> Which we would have skipped. All of that would have been skipped. <laughs> also, were there any uh, plans to further round out the Dinobots or the Constructicons? Yes, for both. And yeah, then they would fight to the death. <laughs> <laughs> were, they, were, were there any plans to put any five group combined Transformers? Uh, well, we wanted to start out with Devastator. Uh, so we didn't we didn't get and we, we didn't get that far. So we I, we the five group I think was was farther down the road than we would have probably gone. Um, I'm not sure if this was asked already, but were there any plans to have any more source beams films like Dirge or um, Rest? We we talked about it. We had um I had done color schemes for them. And we we drew up a little bit of their personalities for um, for the toys that came out or were going to come out. One was um, one was envy, and the other was gluttony. So. <laughs> and um, are there any other special ops teams, either for the Autobots or the Decepticons, so like the Wreckers or the Ten Deadliest Killers or the Mayhem Attack Squad? There, there are. I don't know if, if those particular. There probably is a group of Wreckers. I, I mean, you can't can't really not do it in this day and age, I guess. But there's. I started to think about that more and more, and I think there are. You know, um, I like the idea of teams of five. Some things like that, and then there's so, so there are more. I think I listed some on my form screen. Mm -hmm. If you want to dig back through all those pages, there's probably some of them. Totally love it. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello. Hi. I just was wondering what it was like to work with Weird Al and. Uh, <laughs> it was. <laughs> what uh, it, was like? it was really funny because. Um, Tom Kenny brought his kids into that record. His his, his kid and his and his friend, and. They had no idea where I was going to be there. Tom wasn't even working that day. He wasn't even in that episode um, until he showed up. And, and, and when Weird Al came in, or they came in and saw Weird Al, like the kids turned purple, like they stopped breathing. <laughs> and I kind of had the same reaction. And it was funny because, because I was like, oh my god, Weird Al's here. And, and, and all, the, all the voice actors who are totally used to working with all these you know, huge name celebrities, they're all kind of like, whoa, Weird Al's here. This is crazy. So I think everybody was a little extra starstruck, and, and uh, but it was pretty cool. I mean, once you know, once he was, especially once he was in the booth doing it, like we're all cracking up, and it was great. That's not, any plans to bring anyone else for voices later? Oh yeah, we had a we always had a just like the wish list of characters, we had a wish list of, of actors to go with it. So yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hello. This is my nephew Tannen, and uh, he's pretty worried about Rodimus, and wondering if he survived the cosmic rust attack. He's yeah, Rodimus is currently convalescing. He'll be alright. That's good to know. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, um, I was just wondering how early in the production um, was Waffinator brought up? <laughs> in, on my part, they were probably like, they were like, "Hey, can we do Waffinator?" <laughs> That doesn't work in this at all. It it, it, became, it, it started. Um, oh, so originally in Auto Blue Camp, we were going to have Cliff Jumper be the trigger. Yeah, so, and, and Hasbro's like, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not going to happen. 
so we're like, well, what else can we do? And, I, and then we started talking about, you know, we needed it to be sort of an analog to Bumblebee. And I'm like, well, this might work. And then and Marty's like, yeah, that could work. And then, yeah, and then so he, and it was, was actually cool because then he got to actually have a character out of his own. So, so I had been thinking about it for, since the beginning, though. Like, he's one of my favorite characters of all time. Hello. Hello. Okay. Um, not sure if this was asked already, but I can't hear you over your head. <laughs> I apologize. It has mine its own. Do you have a head under there? Sometimes. <laughs> that will be revealed in season four. Um, which brings me to my question. Um, um, at the very end of season three, like the climactic, crazy ending of you know the triumphant return to Cybertron, Megatron's in chains, Optimus has some kind of makeshift like Matrix everything. That was like to me that was kind of like the, the moment where that was the one moment in the entire animated series where I wished I could have seen just a few moments after of what would happen after that. Yeah. In your mind, like what would have happened just a few moments after it went off the air, and what would happen right after that point? I think a. Uh... Sentinel would have shuffled them all away very quickly to a debriefing, which they wouldn't have emerged from for probably quite a while. <laughs> the, the Decepticons were all taken to Trypticon prison, and and everything. Yeah, I think Sentinel would probably try to try to spin it in a way that made him look look good, and, and uh, so he could keep his momentum as Magnus going. But there there was we, we had talked about in season four. Uh, the populace of Cybertron kind of shifting and saying, wow, this Optimus guy is pretty great. He might make a good man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was hoping for. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Amazingly, I have not yet asked this of you, but uh, what were the plans for Lug in season four? Oh, uh, <laughs>
<laughs> There's some squealing. Um, like how do you feel that the um, how are you feeling the Japanese are handling animated? Um, like, which, like, I think it's great. I, I think um, you know there was a lot of talk about them tying it into the movie and everything, but but it turned out that they just adapted it into Japanese language and, and played it. So it's 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 pretty awesome. They did a, a they totally kicked their ass with the intro of the theme song, I think. Uh, they win with that one, and, and if, if I could ever do any more, I would definitely slap that on the front. Um, and, and it's, I hear it's doing really well, and toys are selling really well, and I, I couldn't be happier about it. Um, in, I believe it was Rise of the Predacons, when Sentinel was giving Black Rapneo all of that about her organic mode, she then told them that it was bad, but it wasn't that bad. So I was just wondering if in the future we were going to start seeing her start to accept her organic mode and start to use it. I think so. I think that would have been a big part of her character arc. And, and when, when that moment happened, and she accepted herself, it kind of wasn't going to be good for anybody. <laughs> so, except for Black Rapping, of course. <laughs> Uh, well, another Black Rapnia question. Um, was she ever intended to join the Megatron's team? Uh, briefly, yes. Well, she was going to rejoin Megatron's team briefly in season four before finally coming to the realization that, that she should be the boss herself of her own team. And uh, do you know if a uh, striker toy was ever planned? Was that? Do you know if a striker toy was ever planned? Uh, it was the same thing where we, we worked with Castro and, and we figured out the basic transformation that they could have then given to Takara to do the engineering. So there were, um, I think animated, they, they thought there was a, Hasbro felt like there was a, a lot of big, tanky, heavy vehicles and they, they wanted more race cars and jets and things. So it was, but I always hoped. So. And I still do. <laughs> I want a real one in a box. <laughs> okay, here's a hypothetical. Here's a hypothetical. Suppose that uh, for whatever reason, an upcoming Bacon, they decide to uh, go with an animated theme and they decide to bring you on as a consultant. What would you make the box set? Uh, and what would you like? What, what would you do the box set like using the existing molds and stuff? You know, I don't think I want to answer that because just in case that ever does happen, I don't want to. You know, I, uh, I, I do some, some late nights, I want to sitting there with my eyes open, not sleeping. I'm making a list. <laughs> and I'm recoloring animated molds in my head. Are you checking it twice? <laughs> I've checked it, I've checked it about 200,000 times. So, so um, if they ever did want to do it and, and I would be Sinclair listening. And I would be happy to be involved, and, you know. But I don't want to. I don't want to give away the list. Did you hear that, me? Did you hear that? Good. Uh, with that, with all of these unanswered questions about season four that some people have been bringing up. Does this mean that we could possibly finally get a season four in the comic book form? It's not up to me. Oh. So, okay. right to IDW and that. They did it with Buffy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Joss Whedon, I don't have that oh, kind of pull. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, following what they did, or 
that she has some connection with the AllSpark. Uh, yeah, she has a, well, yeah. Uh, uh, I guess um, I guess I'd rather not, I can't answer. I, uh, you know, it's it's all it's all stuff we would, we would like to tell, all stories we would like to tell. But at this point, I don't want to I don't want to say. Anything. Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Will we find out one day? I hope so. I certainly hope so. <laughs> yes, because before I die, I'll tell you. Okay. <laughs> Where I'm 85 years old, and then you know, then then on my on my form spring, I'll, I'll type it in, right? With with my dying breath. Well, then then you have to ask Marty. Okay, so we've seen your personal list of who you think are the top sword fighters of the Cybertron, so Springer, Star Saber, etc. Then on the back of our C's bio, it's also mentioned that she's one of the top sword fighters on Cybertron. So I'm just wondering where you would place her. Well, it, it's possible that RC, you know, after being in a, in a sort of coma all these years, hasn't trained with those swords yet and has not known the top sword fighters yet, but could possibly become that if the dojos ever reopened. And just between um, Megatron, RC, and Cyclonus, there are a lot of uh, Cybertronians who dual wield. I was just wondering if there was a reason for that, aside from you. Know, I think it's, it probably has um, to do with uh, uh, some, some of the transformation and the, the parallel uh, vehicle forms. You know, if, if you have a helicopter with two, two blades, then obviously you, know, you want to both be swords. And sometimes it just looks more badass when you have two swords in your hands, you know, when they're glowing. And would we have seen any more of Derek Powell? Where is he Powell? Oh. <laughs> wow! I also wow, love the style of Fishy Can that Porter C. Powell has a son who's named him after me. Derek <laughs> Powell. <laughs> um, I would like to think so, yeah. So I think we're, we're getting close to the end, so any quick last questions? Um, was there, during the pre-production of the first season, any resistance from any party towards making the human friend character to the robots a girl? <laughs> yes, there was. But it's kind of what uh, Cartoon Network wanted, so they said, well, if you want to put this show on, the, on our network, then we would like a, a strong female character. And they said, okay. So what exactly happened to Meltdown after he became like a Pile of best. He's uh, <laughs> He's trying to. He's currently trying to reassemble himself, puddle by puddle. So behind the scenes question: How exactly did the uh, Cyber Ninja concept come about in development? As far as being in the series, I think that was. Um, I think Prowl was slated to be a ninja before I got on board, and um, it just kind of grew from there. I mean, we brought Jazz in. We're like, oh, you know, it would be cool if he was linked to that in some way, and then, then it kind of just grew. It, it was like a natural growth throughout the show. All this talk of ninjas and swords and such has been one of It is nice, huh? <laughs> How badly would you want to do animated drift? <laughs> I, I wouldn't be opposed to it. I'm sure we can find a cool spin on it too. You know, I, I um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm open to it. We are unfortunately out of time. I'd like to thank everybody for coming. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. Woo!
things I'm selling too, so if, if you see me, buy something. <laughs> In another five minutes, we'll have our Mark Ryan panel starting.